I'm a capitalist bootlicker. The definition of bootlicker is an obsequious or overly deferential person, a toady. And I mean, not a toady. See, this is how the haters are making me better. Bootlicker. Someone who seeks favor or goodwill in a servile, degraded way. Toady. He comes across as a facile bootlicker. Someone who would do anything like a lapdog to please somebody in the chain of command. <laughs> Love it. Perfect example of why you should heart your haters. Love your haters. A show I did the other day. Let's look at this exchange, which was a reply to the recent Better Human newsletter. This was in the news section and responding to Elizabeth Warren's wealth tax plan. You know, the whole tax rich narrative, which the likes of AOC and Bernie and the other socialist morons love to throw out there as this is the reason that one, society is not working apparently. And then two, we need to tax them so they can pay to fix, I guess, fix everything. Or I guess pay for the government incompetence that takes in tax revenue and can't actually make it any good use of it and ends up spending more than it brings in. So that's definitely going to be reserved for a separate show. I'm going to do a whole show. Maybe I'll do it next on this idea of a wealth tax and taxing the rich and how it doesn't work and how in every example that it's been tried, every jurisdiction, there's cities that have done it. There's, uh, I'm sure there's been nations that have done it. And every single example of raising the taxes, I mean, of anybody, but especially the rich, what happens is less tax revenue. And when you lower tax, when you lower the tax on the rich or whoever, you have more tax revenue. How is that possible? But like most narratives today, the truth is usually the opposite of what the masses believe and what the status quo narrative is. I've thought about this long and hard. I don't know why this is. It's kind of the human desire to have simple conclusions and simple like theories and like things work because it sounds like it works. And we don't want to really dive into the service and understand that things are actually a lot more complex than we think. And there's all these other things that prop up when you try to in intervene, et cetera, et cetera. Today's just about this person in human psychology. Let's see what she said here. So she said, oh, shut the F up, you capitalist bootlicker. And then I kid you not, this could not get any more hilarious. Right above, below that line, sent from my iPhone. Oh my God, the irony. That is what's so kind of sad, but also hilarious about haters and about just people that kind of primarily respond to things. They don't really think it through. They just like, oh, you say something that's contrary to the narrative and I got to attack you because you're threatening my worldview and all that other BS. It's like they cannot see the irony and the stupidity of their own beliefs and perspectives and the things they say and do. The irony here to say somebody is a capitalist bootlicker on, right above the line sent from my iPhone is the, one of the most ultimate ironies I've ever seen. So I reply here, haha, love it. Your brain broke because you can't accept how the market actually works. And the irony is lost in you that you were sending this from your iPhone created by capitalists. LOL. And then she replied, <clears throat> which I decided to block her because I'm not getting into this. I have no more time to spend. I'll throw out a few sentences every so often to try to remind people of how stupid they're being. I have no problem doing that. And maybe every so often somebody will actually wake up and maybe they'll be like, oh yeah, maybe I should actually consider what I just said. We can always hope. This is what she said. Weird how it's almost like people are forced to live to then live in that society and thus use what's necessary. How bizarre. You're never going to be Bezos. Must be the white guy mentality. <laughs> so, okay, I'll just go to my reply. Forced to live here, question mark? That's a great take. You could live in the woods and shun all the capitalism you don't understand. It's a shame because you're probably normal slash nice in real life. Then you get online and you can't think clearly or for yourself. So you lash out when confronted with truths you can't accept. I hope you find some way in life. Obviously, part of me is saying this from that elitist, hubris, egotistical, uh, I'm smarter than you or I know more than you. And I actually completely and 100% believe that. 100%. If there is something that I'm talking about that has been thoroughly understood, researched, accepted, like principles-based, history-based, whatever, I have absolutely no reason to pretend that I'm coming from a place of truth and you're not, or the person isn't, or whatever. I have no problem. Like, like for me, it's not a morality thing. It's kind of like saying one plus one is two, and then you say one plus one is three, and then I say, um, no, it's not. Here's here's why, how, and th and then like me placating to that person in some way, or trying to like beat around the bush. No, fuck that. Seriously, if you can't see that one plus one equals two, that's your own damn fault. And maybe you do need to be called a moron or stupid or whatever. Now I know I don't want to put that energy out in the universe and I don't think you should either. So we have to be very careful with this. I've been dealing with people like this online for a long time now. So I've kind of gotten to a point where I kind of enjoy it, gets me fired up and it gives me content like this that can be entertaining, which I know people appreciate online. So I got to give them some entertainment, et cetera. 
So you have to be careful because you can definitely get sucked into the dark pit of despair of lower forms of consciousness, or you will lower yourself to their levels, my dad always used to say. I genuinely, do, though, do hope that she can rise up from her lower consciousness and her, her lack of information or her lack of research on this topic. Or maybe at the very least, she'll be afraid to just send out those emotional responses without thinking them through. And if she learns that life lesson, it's going to benefit her tremendously. And maybe it'll get her thinking differently or opening her mind or whatever. Everything that I do is to build better humans and to wake them up in whatever way I can. But that does not mean for one second that I, it's just like universal love for all and that some people aren't pieces of S-H-I-T and some people don't deserve to be called out because they should be called out. This is something that, real quick, tangent, this is the reality. Our ancestors had the threat of violence. If you insulted somebody publicly, a lot of times they would even have rituals around, now you have to fight. Some you'd have to fight to the death or because your honor was shunned or whatever. These things were so, I mean, we used to have dueling in America up into the early 1900s. And then it was finally banned, I think in like 1913. We had these things and they were mattered so much because of our species. Because if somebody insults you in front of others in your tribe or gossip, gossips about you or, or betrays you, you take it so damn seriously because it's actually a threat to your survival and reproduction. Because if everyone thinks you're a cheat or you're a liar or this or whatever, and the whole tribe finds out, well, there goes your mating chances. No kids for you. Or maybe they just leave you behind one day or they kill you, club you on the back of the head with a club. I mean, that stuff happens. You can actually read accounts of this. There's one guy who he would kill the old and the infirmed if they became a threat to the survival of the group. This is nature. This is not about morality. We have this idea that the society we've created is just like an, a given and that there's not been blood, sweat, and tears and, and literally billions of people that have died to make us have the prosperity we have today, which is, again, when people talk about capitalism, they're so blatantly ignorant of just history and like what it's actually taken to get here. It's disgusting. So parts of me do get pissed off and parts of me do want to call people morons. And, and generally, most people aren't fully morons. They're just morons in different areas. They're kind of like cherry picked morons. In some areas, they're probably strong or open minded or great or gracious or nice or whatever. In other areas, they're morons. And a lot of times the Internet brings out the moron part of humanity. It just is what it is. So I'm not for a second one to believe that we should have equality in the world or anything like that, at least as much in so much as we don't have equality of outcome. Things will always be unequal and uneven. That's nature. But that's also why people desire designer goods and you have uh, different mates and you want to have sex with that person because they're more attractive. Than, like this is nature. Okay. This is just Darwinian evolution, survival of the fittest, etc. That's not going away and it shouldn't because it's part of what the flavor of life is all about. If we were to create a utopia and we were all the same color or spoke the same language, everybody was exactly the same. It'd be a pretty damn boring place to live, to be honest. There would be no struggle. There'd be no reason to wake up every day and do anything at all. And this is what modern comfortable humans seem to forget. They forget that the struggle is the Taoist explanation manifesting, which is everything in life is a balance of positive and negative. If you don't have the bad, you can't have the good and vice versa. If you don't know what a bad thing is, you literally... Listen to me for a second. Literally cannot define what a good thing is. They are two sides of the same coin. You can't have one with the other without the other. So if you want to be anything in life, if you want to stand out in any way or create art or build something or feel good about anything you do, it has to be defined as being better in some ways or at least more desirable to some in some ways than something else. Even her desire to tell me to STFU to kind of fix her the dissonance in her brain that welled up is her trying to lower my status by attacking me so that she doesn't feel blow in her understanding or thinking or whatever. And that is a purely selfish motivation to make herself feel better at my expense. The thing is, she attacks somebody who's not going to placate or bow down or any of that. No, I'm a fighter. You come at me, I'm going to fight back. And if you come at me, you better be prepared to die, at least in the physical sense if you come at me or my family, I, I know that I got the killer instinct in me and we all do. I'm just one that has not pretended that it's not there because it's there. We all have it. Humanity has killed more members of its own species and other species than any other animal in the animal kingdom. Probably throughout the history of Earth. We are the most dangerous predator on the planet. And if you actually look at it, what is the biggest threat to humanity today? It's not lions or tar tigers or uh, elephants or hippopotamuses. It's actually other humans. And it's not even close. The psychology here is the thing. I talk a lot about being aware of your own bias, of 
resisting that emotional desire to like lash out if I say something or if anybody says something that you don't like. I deal with it too. When people say dumb things, I have to resist not just like attacking them. I have to I have to try to be compassionate and maybe offer like a clear, well thought out, considered question or argument or whatever, because that's actually more useful to discourse rather than just attacking somebody or writing them off. And I will and I will tell you, I will admit that I generally am not as good at that than the short, just like writing you off responses. I'm I'm I tend to do those on Twitter. I just kind of like say one thing and then I'm like LOL face and and whatever. And in a way that is a defense mechanism because I don't want to get pulled into an argument. So I try to like end it. If you don't accept that fact of yourself, if you have delusions about anything, human nature or capitalism or the rich or the poor or whatever, or the inequality of nature, if you cannot understand these axioms and these principles and then maneuver your way around that understanding or use that understanding to make better decisions, then you're always going to be a slave to illusions. And being a slave to illusions, which is something that's not real, right? Illusions are not real. Being a slave to something that isn't real is the last thing you want to be a slave to because there's actually no way for you to ever take back control or dictate where you go in life or what you do or you think if you can't dissolve those illusions. So this type of thinking for somebody like her, this is what it comes down to. She is going to hold herself back in multiple ways. And it probably is going to have nothing to do with rich people. But maybe it is. Maybe she has an amazing job opportunity. But because the guy is a successful business owner and he drives a Lambo and he's kind of flashy with his money, she's like, oh, he's a capitalist pig. I can't take this job. There are so many ways where these type of faulty thinking lines can hurt you. And she probably wouldn't even realize it. You're sending this from an iPhone. You're living in the comfort of air conditioning and, and real estate and all these different things and, and probably cars and transportation and planes and food that doesn't kill you every time you eat it. Like if you can't understand that that's the game you're playing in the environment you're in and you have this faulty relationship with it where you think like it's inherently wrong, but then you enjoy the fruits of the thing that you say is wrong, then you're not only a fraud and a phony, but you're going to hold yourself back in ways that nobody can really even comprehend way more ways than you can even fathom. And I've seen this a lot with people that want to be successful. I've seen people that want to like go the entrepreneurial route. They want to like start a business or whatever. And most of them never do anything. This is always mindset because I believe that 99% of humanity has the intelligence and the skills to, to be successful in life. You can be happy. You can make whatever money you need and it can be amazing. Everybody has that ability. It's not about being reserved for only the super this or super that or smart, successful, or whatever. It's literally about doing the work, not sabotaging yourself, staying open-minded enough to continually learning to what you're doing and making adjustments, whatever. And this can be a very long process. It can take 10 to 20 years, but you can get there if you just stick to the fundamentals of learning, trying, learning, trying, and then have a solid work ethic and you'll get to some kind of success. I promise you, anybody and everybody can do that. But so many people, they don't address the underlying psychological issues. A lot of people don't feel they deserve success because they have some unresolved childhood trauma or something like that. So they pursue these things and they create a business plan and maybe they even get a little bit of traction. Everyone loves their product and then they don't do it because, oh, now I don't have money or I get caught up in some other thing I'm doing or I'm going to do it later or whatever. And it's always the same thing. It's always some excuse that is actually not about the excuse itself, but rather about the person inside that is limiting that person on the outside without the outside person even knowing it. That was a fun take on, I didn't want to say a hater, just somebody that is misinformed. And I wish the best for her. I hope that she maybe learns from this email exchange and or maybe she sees this video or whatever. I mean, it's funny that this is the email she decided to respond to, even though I've sent emails that are way more bombastic, calling out BS on masks and vaccines and literally everything that's going on in the world. And she picks the one where just talking about the basics of free markets and capitalism and how they actually work and how like if you tax the rich, they just go somewhere else and they take all their tax revenue with it, right? It's, it's kind of bizarre, but that's, again, everybody has their blind spots. We all have the things that we haven't fully thought about and maybe we have these beliefs and these biases that have never really manifested in a way for us to forcibly have to consider them. And maybe this is an example for her. What's funny is I guarantee you this person that sent this from her iPhone, that lives most likely in America, will get a job, will spend that money on consumer products, and she will engage in capitalism for the rest of her life because she's not going to go live in the woods somewhere or go live in, I don't know, North Korea or maybe Cuba or whatever. She's not going to do any of those things. 
And she's going to she's gonna basically have this, this complete misunderstanding of the system she's in and the abundance around her. And she's going to take it all for granted. And she's going to do that her whole life until something really wakes her up. And that's kind of a sad existence if you think about it. Man, really, how delusional. But also, so what for, for anybody else? Like she can be delusional to herself. She's not really affecting anybody with like her random comments here. But like to her, the person, she's the real victim here to herself. Well, that's it for today. Get the better humans that are over at thebetterhuman.co. And that's where you can get my takes like this. And if you so feel inclined, you can send me an email and you can talk mad shit to me if you want. And I might feature it here, but make sure that it comes from the heart and it does truly come from a lower form of consciousness. And you're not trying to get attention with some kind of fake reverse virtue signaling, whatever, because I will snuff that out and I won't reply to you. But if it's truly because I said something that triggered you and you get triggered and you let all your triggering glory show up in an email, I might actually feature you. That's going to be it for today. I'll see you in the next one.